Hey guys, I'm just going to make a short video today on chapter 10.2, Hypoth Hypothesis Tests for Population Proportions. All right, so here are three examples, and it goes through um, one-tailed and two-tailed tests, so the three types. Um, we got the null hypothesis equals something, and then it's greater than, less than, and then not equal to. This is actually a two-tailed test. Because you're looking, you have a, a population proportion of, say, 0.85. Right? And you're looking to see if this new statistic here, so say they sampled 500 people and 400 pe uh, 420 people had this, uh, this characteristic. So these actually will give you a different number. But what you're finding is do your your values or your p-value is what we're looking for lie outside of the confidence interval given so like say our confidence interval was here this is alpha or alpha over two if it's two-tailed test um, if your p-value for your new statistic lies outside that means this old statistic is wrong so we reject it right but if our p-value is in here, we uh, fail to reject that it's different from this. Okay, so let's do these problems. First one, we have a null hypothesis, right? This means null. And this means alternative. Okay, so we're trying to test, we have an original population proportion of 0.2 or 20 percent and then we're trying to figure out if this has grown over the years or whatever greater than 0.2 so here's how we do it you can do this by hand but it's it's probably better just to use the calculator so we're going to have this to the side and this is what you would type in to actually find these values so first of all we have this given to us this gives us our new population proportion, or our sample population proportion, which is uh, 30 divided by 125, okay? Whatever that number is. You can calculate the z-score for this. So let's get that number. We got 30 divided by 125 is 0.24. So if they ask you to actually find the z-value for these problems, all you do is you divide x divided by n, so this is our sample, this gives us p hat. So we get z not is how it says it, is, well, p hat minus p, the original p-value, they call this p not sometimes with a little zero down here, divided by the standard deviation of the proportion. Now, you also have to remember the equation for that. So this equation here is equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n, OK? So when you're doing this calculation, for us, it's going to be 0.24 minus um, 0.2 was our original, divided by the square root of 0.2, still using that 0.2, times 1 minus 0.2 is 0.8, divided by n is 125. Okay, so that's doing that by hand, and that gives you some z value, okay? But let's just do it with the calculator. So if you're going to do this with the calculator, you type in stat test one proportion z test or you can click the number five right and then you type in the values that you're given so you got p naught is 0.2 so this is for number one 0.2 x is 30 and 125 for n this is a greater than which means a right tail 
Okay, so if it's greater than, you're looking this way. That's to the right, the right tail. If it's less than, we're going to be using a left tail test. Okay, and then this is two tail tests because we're just looking to see if it's outside of that range. Okay, so we, we type in these. This is a greater than problem, so we're going to choose this one. I like to put draw because you can actually see what's happening. So once you do this, it's going to give you the important part. It's going to give you something called the critical p-value, okay? So for us, for number one, we get a p-value of, so what this calculator is doing for you is it's giving you a p-value of, let's see, 0.132. So this is an answer to the problem in the homework. Since it's a right tail test, what you're looking at is they give you this p-value of 0.132 and our alpha or our margin of error is 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Okay, so if we had a p-value that's way out here, then we reject the null hypothesis because then there's evidence to say that this new sample you know, tells us that maybe the characteristic has changed, okay? So if it's out here, so this is P, and this is alpha, right? This is telling us that we can't reject the null hypothesis because P is greater than, so this number is bigger than this number, um, alpha, okay? If it was out here, then we can reject it because it's less than, okay? So let's do the next problem. I'm going to erase all that in a second. So we have a null hypothesis of p equals 0.58 or 58%. We're looking at a left tail because it's less than, right? Left, 0.58. And they give us a sample size of 150. 78 people had that characteristic with an alpha or confidence of 99% or a margin of error of 0.01. But we do the same calculations anyways. Um, we'll skip all this for now um, because we don't need to actually calculate this with the calculator. So we'll just erase what we have here. P equals 0.58. X is 150 and 78. 78 for X. N is 150. It is less than. And we can draw it. It's what I pick usually. And that gives us 0 0.068. So we get, okay, P value is 0 0.068. We can say that that's here, 0 0.068. And we have a critical value of 0 0.01. Okay. So, actually, let me put that right here. So, this is alpha. This is P. Again, we have the same situation, all right? If your p-value is closer to the mean, then you can't reject, okay? So again, we can't reject the null because, again, P is greater than L, okay? And then this last one. 
Okay, so we have a p-value of 0.85. It's two-tailed, so we're looking at both the tails this time. Um, for your null hypothesis. So these are given in the problem. They'll either say greater than or more than or less than or fewer, or they'll say not. They'll say not equal to. So here's our new numbers. Um, this one we could still try by hand, but in the end, just calculate the p-value with the calculator. That's what it's there for. But I'll show you how to do that anyways because they ask in the homework for you to do that. So, so we have, let's see, get rid of these. Okay, new problem. So again, this gives us p hat is 420 divided by 500, which is, what is that, 84, 0.84. And then we have Z equals 0.84 minus 0.85 over the square root 0.85, don't get these confused because it'll ruin your standard deviation down here. 0.15 is 1 minus 0.85 divided by the sample size of 500. And we get a number out of that. I calculated this separately, so it's 0.63 down here, negative. Wait, did I just... No, I, I think that's it. We get negative 0.63. Okay, so if they ask you to do it by hand, you got to do it this way. All right, but again, just going back to the calculator to figure out everything else. So we have a P naught of 0.85, peanut, okay, um, 85, an x value of 420, 500, it's not equal to test this time, or draw it. So we get this, this p value given to us, it'll tell us, let's see, I'll actually show you how to do this in the calculator this time. So. We go to stat, tests, so scroll over, then press five for the one proportion Z test. We have a P naught of 0.85, an X value of 420, 500 for an N value, not equal to, we will draw it. So this is what I like about it. this is actually showing us what's going on. Then we get our p-value of 0.53. We say, okay, p equals 0.53. And then you compare that to your alpha of 0.05. It's way bigger. All right, so, so we already know the answer is going to be the same as the last two. We can't reject the null because p is way bigger than alpha. So let's write that down. So what we get is we get this two two tailed p test where our area is out here, but then we have these alphas out here. So if the p value lies inside, again closer to the mean, we can't draw a conclusion. We have to say, okay, well, the uh, the average is probably still the average. So. Again, can't or do not reject null hypothesis because um, P is greater than alpha. That's it. So all your other word problems that are on your homework tonight, 
are based off of this. You're going to pull out your information, n, x, and alpha, which you don't even really need the alpha because this will calculate everything for you. Alpha is just used in the very end when you're trying to draw your conclusion, right? But in the end, it's all in the calculator. You just get your givens out of the problem, which is probably the hard part because the problems are really lengthy, but once you pull out all the numbers, it's really just as simple as this. So have a good day.